It's the theme song from Ben Casey, a huge television hit back in the 1960s. Dr. Casey was purely fictional, but today you could program an entire MDTV network with all the doctors on the air. Only this time, Rita Braver tells us, the doctors are real. This is without question not the best part of this job. They primp. Smart light bulbs, just, it's the new kid on the block, you know, so we'll talk about that. And they prep. Do we have props for that one? For that one, no. We're okay. just going to have you sit in stools. We have just what you'd expect from television stars. But the stars of the doctors... Doctor, give me the news. ...really are doctors. I'm Dr. Andrew Orden. I'm the plastic Behind surgeon on the, the show. Decision. I'm Dr. Jim Sears, and I'm the pediatrician. I'm Dr. Lisa Masterson, and I'm the obstetrician and gynecologist. Dr. Travis Stork, emergency room physician. He, at least, is not a TV novice. You were first seen by America as the bachelor doctor on the show The Bachelor, right? It's very true. Really? <laughs> Fair enough. You were Does the bachelor? That... Oh, my goodness. I didn't tell you guys. <laughs> hey, you didn't know that? All still practice medicine, but have cut back to bask in the spotlight. Don't you worry that maybe you have this amazing background, experience, education, and you're using it on television? Don't you worry that maybe you could do better if you were seeing patients all the time? You know what? Uh, in my office, I reach, you know, one patient at a time. You know, in an hour, I maybe see two, three, four, five patients. In an hour on TV, we reach millions of patients. And so I'm, I'm reaching way more people at w in one show than I would do my entire lifetime. They take on serious Hello, medical issues. To Today we're setting the record straight. We're updating you on everything that you need to know to keep you and your family safe from the swine flu. How do you wipe correctly? But some of their topics may surprise you. Sometimes we like to talk about the fact that vaginal itching is on their eyes. <laughs> Is it hard to talk about that stuff uh, in front of the whole world? It's not hard for us to talk about it. It's hard for people in America to talk about it. Well, listen, that's the thing, to have fun with it and, and you know, relax with those questions and realize that, that you're not alone. You know, everybody, you know, deals with those questions at some point in time. Should I be douching? Oh, absolutely not. Never, 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 never douching. The show was actually inspired by viewer questions sent to TV psychologist Phil McGraw. People saying all the time, look, I know, Dr. Phil, that you're not a medical doctor, but you do have access to them. His son, Jay McGraw, is executive producer of The Doctors, which is distributed by CBS. It's the top-rated new syndicated show and airs in 25 countries. We have a responsibility that a lot of television shows don't have because we're giving you information about you, about your health, about your life. And so we have a responsibility to get it right. Every time, without exception, we've got to do our homework. Americans have always loved fictional doctor shows, from the days of Ben Casey and Dr. Kildare in the 1960s. Casey, oh, oh. Everybody say, ah. To Scrubs and Grey's Anatomy today. Dr. Bailey, who you got? Christina Gus. But lately, real doctors oh, seem to have increasing star power. Every major network has at least one. Dr. Sanjay Gupta of CNN and CBS was even considered by President Obama for Surgeon General. Uh, there's some exciting things going on out there. Uh, Dr. John LaPook is on call for the CBS Evening News. What's the advantage to having a doctor explaining medical issues to the public? I think probably we're better at putting it all in, in context to give it a good, proper perspective. Ginenthal is in the first stages of Alzheimer's disease, but is doing everything he can to build his body to protect his brain. He says that stories like this on Alzheimer's help people understand that others face similar problems. I think people do feel isolated and alone when they have illness. So I think shining a light on it, doing it gently, and adding information, putting it in perspective, saying what people can do about it, I think that's a real service that we can perform. And it's a service that many doctors are eager to perform, even just making guest appearances. About how many doctors do you figure that you have represented over the years? I would say probably at numbers in the hundreds. 
Catherine Rothman, founder of the New York public relations firm KMR Communications, lines up TV appearances for doctors. You think that when consumers go into a doctor's office, they are more impressed with TV appearances than with fancy degrees on the wall? I 100% believe it, and I'm not saying that it's necessarily the correct way to think, but it simply has become the mindset due to the media-driven society that we're in. What's the hierarchy of where doctors want to be? The holy grail is always Oprah. And if I had a dime for every time a physician asked if I could get them on Oprah, I would be off in Monaco right now. No wonder. Yeah, Oprah's fun. favorite doctor, cardiac surgeon Mehmet Oz, is slated to get his own TV show this fall. Listen, life, life-saving information about the deadly superbug sweeping the nation. But, three days. but Oprah's not the only prescription for TV success. Just ask Nicholas Paracone, dermatologist and author. Look, this is the first book we were talking about, The Wrinkle Cure, and that was a number one New York Times bestseller. But only after Good Morning America showed before and after photos of women who'd followed the doctor's diet and skin care regimen for just three days. And each time you had a new book out, would you go on television to help promote the book? Yes, it was a very important aspect of launching a book is national television. And I'd say it's absolutely critical. He's also hosted a series of PBS specials. About aging. We're going to find out that aging is optional. And I think that's a, you know, that's a nice term to think about. I don't have to get old. The exposure has helped publicize his views on healthy diet and lifestyle and boosted his skincare line. And he stopped practicing daily medicine to concentrate on research. You make a lot more money than if you just saw patients every day, don't you? Certainly, certainly do, yes. The idea of real doctors seeking fame and fortune on television is still a relatively new concept. 20 or 30 years ago, if a physician went out, it was kind of called ambulance chasing. But today, even the state American Medical Association encourages doctors to go on television. And I think it does recognize the thirst the American public has about health. They're fascinated with it. They're fascinated. Still, with AMA technology. president Dr. Uh, James Rohack worries that some patients could rely on a TV diagnosis. They could potentially be missing a life-threatening problem. They could be treated in an early state if they don't get that physical examination, which you can't get on the television. With that in mind, the doctors repeatedly warn viewers. If you have any kind of medical question, no matter how embarrassed you may feel, please ask your doctor about it. Knowledge is power. Those are doctor's orders. And if anything, they say their office visits are up. They, 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 are, they like talk to me like, I, I know you, I've already met you. So in a way, the whole consultation process is different on the basis of that. And then another thing that's a little different, we're talking, they go, well, will you sign an autograph for me too? So that, 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 <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah. that is a little out there.